making these, so let's go into Season 2 with the uh, minute amount of knowledge I got from Season 1. Apparently, again, most people tend to check out after the first 10 seconds, so I need to make this as arresting as possible. I'm open to suggestions in the future, um, and also probably me from the future has inserted something incredibly obnoxious before I started talking. I think the creative process might be considered a form of time travel. How are your uh, end of year festivities, you know? I guarantee someone who watches me has a more interesting life, but is watching this for some reason. It was very relaxed and family focused Christmas and New Year's for me, although I did attend an ugly sweater party. I, did, I had fun, obviously, since I got to see some friends who had gone off for college, and who I usually interact through in what can only be described as the world's most deranged group chat. Uh, in, ca in case you're wondering, I, I didn't win since competition and the ultimate winner was insanely overqualified for this. Like, even if I took a picture of the winning, losing, does anyone really win a ugly sweater contest? I, I'm pretty sure I couldn't show you it because, uh, it is surprisingly, uh, lewd. What is the process behind the person that puts an anthropomorphic and highly sexualized reindeer on a sweater? That is the sentence that I just said and now exists forever on the internet. Aside here, brief aside, I would like to apologize to my host for, uh, just kind of staying there a little, little too long and talking the year off for no good reason. No, no one should ever have to talk to me for a long period of time. It's just not healthy. Uh, what else? What else? What else did I do? Oh, I went and saw Moonlight. Uh, I was able to catch it in theaters, which that movie is amazingly done. Uh, it like it gets in your head and it makes you realize something astounding about uh, other people. And it's just fantastic. You have to go see it. It's better than I did. I mean, I can't even bother to brush my hair in the morning. And it's Definitely, it's definitely worth all the awards that it's gotten. Oh, it's fantastic. And on the subject of uh, repping movies, uh, The Nice Guys came out earlier in 2016, and it's a very, it's very different than Moonlight. It's not at all that awards-winning drama sort of scenario. It's a, it's a, it's a great fun. It's well done. It's, a, uh, it's a really nice detective genre throwback movie. And since it didn't have men in tights uh, flying through the sky punching each other, it didn't make any money at the box office. To be fair, I don't think anybody made any money going against Civil War. You gotta support these little movies, man. Otherwise, I just won't be mad, but I will be disappointed. Uh, links to places and places for links. Right, let's uh, get back on the rails here by defining what this show is. Since last season it was kind of all over the place and a little loose. Uh, let's just, it, what this is, it's not a vlog. I cannot be clearer on that, so I created an acronym, uh, a very helpful acronym, to describe and define what the show is. Can I get a drum roll, please? The definition is autobiographical documentary serial, or ADS for short. For as long as I do this, the show will be built around the core of ADS. That means retelling and the sharpest prose, whatever has impacted me in the week in terms of school, news, or uh, if a bird lands outside of this window. So from now on, I will make it my mission to deliver to you, the viewer, ADS on a regular schedule, as regular as possible. A new semester of college means new professors to figure out and understand how to uh, survive their classes. A Calc 1 professor seems like a nice person, you know, with all those standard good teacher attributes, which, you know, you gotta have, you gotta be a good teacher for calculus, because it is. That's a tough subject. I'm pretty sure so I'm taking Calc 1 off. This is like the third time in three years I've been taking some form of like that entry level calculus. As a bonus, I got one of my friends there is in the class with me, so that's always good. Free study, buddy. Don't have to talk to strangers. It's a win. Music appreciation has this nice, uh, nice professor. It's music appreciation. You don't have to worry about that too hard. Uh, the speech professor, however, might be a bit of a difficult thing for me since she's seems to be the oversharing type. You know, I mean. I, I you know, understand introducing yourself to your students, but why do you need to spend like 20 minutes out of the class going through your Facebook photos? That's something nobody wants. Uh, psych class is a blended course, so it's one of those things where like, you only meet like a couple of times over the semester to take tests and then we uh, go home. I said really. Freshers she had a nice voice. And the week goes on and the uh... You start yeah, seeing those little things about professors that uh, you need to make mental note of. Like, for example, the uh, Cal professor has this really like loose way of teaching material. It just kind of slowly drifts from one topic to another with a whole lot of dead air. And um, it's not. This is not a better since she is so technologically talented. Like, there's just this big chunk in the middle of the class. A class where she's just sort of trying to figure out how to work the uh, like calculator program on the computer. She's like, it's 
just, oh, it's agonizing. You know, you know, you know the feel. Oh boy. And she's, uh, oh, the other thing is that she's like trying to like get that interactivity going with the class, you know. Come on, guys, raise your hand, be a little more active. I'm like, I'm thinking, 8 a.m., it's calculus. No one's gonna be interactive at that time of the morning. No, no one. Use appreciation, it's gonna be fun. It's just gonna be a fun little class. It's gonna be, there's a couple, not that many people in there. We're just gonna have a good old time unpacking all the little nitty gritties of music. Yeah. She also did a really good job for the music terminology, especially for like a couple of non-music people that are in there. Uh, which basically boils down to in that first chapter, just kind of listing a bunch of Italian words. Why are music words Italian? Go Google it, just Google it. Um, notice I really haven't been paying attention in speech, especially uh, on, cause on uh, Wednesday I had to give these like little off the cuff speeches for like a minute. I just sort of checked out after that because like the, the tone of the professor's voice, like it's like in this perpetual like smug condescending mode, like I'm better than you. So I'm just sitting there just going like, yes, uh-huh, pretending, pretending to care. And then there was this part with the two dude bros in the back, just completely derailed the class. So just get, got everyone like arguing about some stupid dumb crap. And they were clearly making a couple people uncomfortable with what they were saying. And that the professor was too busy getting baited, like full on baited, to uh, retake control. Like we're we're going through the ethics of speech and it's talking about First Amendment rights. You know, you gotta be yes, you can say what you want, responsibility and all that. With great power comes great whatevers. And so they, they uh, blurt out about the whole um, burning, like con concerning the burning of the flag part, and not even in an interesting way. Just you know that full blown false dichotomy: free speech, burning the flag, no nuance. Um, I tried. To like to like shut that thing down before it like exploded by you know trying to add some context or maybe a little nuance to the situation so it's like oh this isn't to try to like get rid of that false dichotomy so no one would get baited but nope baited teacher got baited people got baited and I'm like oh, speech class it's a speech class nobody wants to be there it's just a, it's, a, it's an unbearable enough class so why are you gonna make it worse for everyone else I mean who does this it's like a real life like thread being disrupted by trolls, and I mean, <clears throat> just tro trolling this, this whole baiting people, it just needs to stop. You know, take it out back, old yeller it, and get on with their lives, and act like mature adults here. <sighs> Why, on this first week's back, the big story of the week has to be this terrible. Obviously I'm referring to the, the circus that was the Don's press conference. A little set up here, there was an unverified dossier uh, that had been flowing around intelligence circles for a while that um, Trump had engaged in some lewd behavior with the Russian government in, cons in a conspiracy to win the election. Also some stuff about water sports. Um, CNN reported roughly the same thing that I did, that I just did, you know. That there's a document, uh, it exists, unverified, here's a summary saying, um, that basically that it exists and that it has, could have uh, damaging information on it, you know? And then they sensibly left out all the gross stuff, and then after trying to follow up on the story for like a week, uh, they dropped it because you couldn't verify it. That's what you do. That's good journalism. BuzzFeed News, uh, after, well, they were, I assume, rummaging around in the garbage. Uh, they just, they just heard the words damaging to Trump. And like, my time has come. And just published the whole 30 page document. Um, just, just, I assume, just to pander to the, Resist Trump, not my president! You know, those kind of people. Um, this, this, this is a clear and present violation of journalistic ethics that BuzzFeed News um, didn't. No, it's, it's unacceptable and unprofessional. I mean, this is sloppy tabloid behavior at best and skirts dangerously close to being liable. And as a result, uh, CNN got roped into the collateral damage that came from this uh, not bombshell. Uh, it's about actually doing the right thing for once. And, and then with Trump, he just lumped the two things together and discredited CNN as a real, real news source to his supporters for at least six months. I don't like CNN. I really don't. I think on the turn on the um, big news networks, they they run com they run uncomfortably close to like 24/7 clickbait, um, and they, it's pretty shallow reporting on their end in general. But still, they have some standards. And now, since BuzzFeed was apparently staffed by complete idiots, uh, this effectively played into that narrative Trump had been building that the media, the liberal media, was out to get him. That's that. Yeah. They just, they just put evidence in that argument where there really wasn't any before. In, uh, in addition, since uh, the, the Donald is an expert showman, by frankly, he's showing himself to be an excellent politician, uh, he's able to 
take the situation and steer all that, all the hoopla that was going around the whole fake doc, the whole unverified document, and he was able to take that and steer it away, get people over here, instead of looking over here, from the fact that his finances are the problematic, uh, some of his picks or the head of the executive department that are flawed at best. And the fact that, quite frankly, he's showing himself that he's not going to give any accountability to any of the campaign promises he made on the trail. For the president-elect, this was fantastic, tremendous even, for defining how the Trump presidency will deal with the media, what their relationship will be. I mean, this is probably going to be fairly close to how Nixon dealt with the press, like treating them as enemies and creating this, like, wall around himself. You, that's a fascinating story. If you care about any of this stuff, contact your representatives. Write a letter and call them saying that you wrote a letter. Emails and all caps social media rants are useless. Uh, just remember to be polite and precise when communicating since this is a highly formal process. They're just gonna, and then you have to, so if you're not uh, polite and precise, uh, the, the uh, filter, the filtration that uh, the letters go through through all the secretaries and all the interns, uh, it's just not going to go through and they're going to look at it and toss it out. Helpful links. Some more optimistic news. I did find this video uh, to spread some optimism, especially regarding the whole personification of 2016 as an evil entity. Yeah, that whole scenario is just kind of a bit silly now. you got to earn that better 2017, okay? Don't, don't just wish for it. I would like to thank you for how you chose your time with me. And now this is all over. It's time for a mutual farewell.